Hello, folk. I'm joined by uh, Lorraine McLeish, who is the she does the admin and operations for uh, Foot of Thought and Dumbarton. Uh, hello, Lorraine. Hi. How are you doing? Hey, Trisha Lorimer. I also run the food share in the White Church in Faithley. Uh, hello, Trisha. Hi. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Listen, Trisha, can I ask you, you know, just to briefly outline what you do up there and how you are coping with the demand through the crisis, through the restrictions and all sorts? We started in January um, providing emergency food parcels to mostly the Faithley residents, but it's open to wider areas, so anyone can come up and it's non-referral. We used to be just a Tuesday morning, but due to the pandemic, it's been more people in more demand. So just now we're open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, delivering food parcels to households as well that are isolating. We give out pre-made meals that are provided by another charity called Wellfed Scotland. Um, and previously, we were giving out packed lunches that were donated by Western Bancher Council, but now they have rolled out the voucher scheme so they're not doing the packed lunches anymore so we're just doing the parcels and the pre-made meals. Listen then, tell us briefly outline what Food for Thought do, you know, tell us how you've been continuing to give support throughout this crisis. So we are an emergency food aid food bank. The emergency crisis has obviously put demand up quite a bit. Um, what we've done when lockdown came in was decided that we needed response drivers. So we put a shout out on Facebook um, asking the community who maybe weren't working for a load, uh, who were willing to help us. Um, we got an amazing response and ended up with over 50 names of drivers who were willing to help. So what we did was we went to delivery only. Operations as normal in here, obviously a bit busier, making emergency food aid parcels up. Drivers were coming in, picking up the bags and then taking them to the referrals that we had to the people that need. So we've continued to do that. It's Demand hasn't really went down any. We're kinda, there is a kind of up and down throughout the week. We'll maybe have one, I say quiet day, it's not really quiet, no compared to where we were before the pandemic. Delivering to between 50 and 100 people a day. Sometimes it can be 100, sometimes it can be 80, sometimes it can be 50, it varies. Normally, before lockdown, we had a community lunch in place where on a Wednesday and Thursday, we would make a hot meal and anybody was welcome in to get a hot meal um, and enjoy the kind of social side of it. A lot of regulars love this, more for the social side of it. This is people that maybe don't really leave their house or have got that kind of so wee bit of social anxiety. So it was yep. kind of helping them, people who had food insecurity, food poverty insecurity issues, um, getting them a hot meal once or twice a week. So these regulars that come in every week, um, we've been trying to keep as much contact as we can, just phoning the ones that we've got their numbers, phoning them regularly, just making sure if they've not been in contact to us or not been referred to us, making sure that we're getting food out to them, delivering to them every week um, and just phoning them as much as we can. Um, the elderly members, service users that we've got as well that obviously maybe are in shielding, contacting them regularly, making sure they're all okay. Previously we let people come in the building and we would have a wee tea or coffee with them and have a wee chat and it was more like a social setting as well but at the moment everyone social distance lines up and we serve them from the front door and they just ask any additional things that they're needing in the parcels like you'll get people asking for toiletries and because the recycle room previously was in the white church as well we also have people asking for clothing so we'll go through and we'll grab some clothing for them as well at the same time and we've got period poverty up there as well, so we provide all the sanitary wear to anyone that's needed them as well. We found that you're working more closer with other organisations just now, you know, coordinating and, and things. Has, has that been the case? Yeah, um, we have good contacts with the schools and safely especially with the nurseries and the schools. We were asking them if there was any kids that are families that they think would need some meals or parcels and the nursery was coming down and picking up quite a lot of these parcels for the families in need because they were doing drop-in checks on the families um, and um, we worked with the Western Bartonshire Council and all the overspill of packed lunches that hadn't been picked up from the schools and to reduce the food waste they were distributing them to organisations so 
the council's been quite good that way that they've they've managed to cut down in the, the food waste and to help families in need at the same time. Would you hope to continue these relationships after the emergency is over? Yeah, yeah, we work quite closely with the council as well. Um, normally, they update us on anything that's happening in the area, and we've got an, in, an input on what's going to happen in our area every time anyway. Um, we work with Brian McQuillan from uh, Western Bartonshire. He's our community liaison officer, so he's really good. And Lawrence O'Neill, the councillor as well, he keeps us updated with everything. And he's actually been up quite a lot and helped us out. He managed to get us the link with Wellfed to get the pre-made meals. So Lawrence has been great. Um, and so is Brian. Brian's helped us fill out grant forms and things like that as well. We are working in partnership with Western Berkshire Council, the crisis team. We get referrals from them. Um, so that's a service that anybody can phone for any help that they need. And the crisis team can refer them to us if it's food aid that they need. Um, and then we just send the food out. So that's worked quite well. We were working with the crisis team and um, they've been great with helping us fund this as well, Western Berkshire Council. Uh, is there any sort of help you need? Uh, I'm thinking along the lines of volunteers, donations, whatever. Yeah, whatever help you need, you can tell them. Um, people who want to help are still accepting all donations. Um, there is a few volunteers who are in the office Monday to Friday. All our volunteers have been amazing. Um, and is there uh, any further help you need, or donations or volunteers or, or, or whatever? We will just always, always welcome any kind of donations. Um, we're able to take donations um, and there is a list um, of the items that we put in each emergency food aid parcel. Um, that should be on our Facebook and on our website if anybody needs um, to see what we do accept in the way of food. Can I ask you, Tricia, is, is there any sort of help you need? Uh, I'm thinking along the lines of volunteers, donations, whatever. Whatever help you need, you can tell them. But it's mostly like donations, like food donations, um, toiletry donations, nappies, baby food, things like that we're always looking for. Um, and they can be dropped off at the church any day that we're open. And just uh, finally, Tricia, if people wanted to get in contact with you uh, for donations or inquire about whether they need help or not, how would they contact you if they're unable to make it up to the church? Yeah, the, most, the easiest way to contact us is through our Faithfully Food Share Facebook page. Um, I tend to answer messages within half an hour and you'll get an answer to whether I can drop stuff off or get someone to drop stuff off to people. Okay, and for those that are not on Facebook, do you have an email address that they can contact? I do them? have an email address, so it is Trisha Faithlyevent at hotmail.com. How do people contact you if they want to donate or volunteer and also if you are looking for help that maybe they're not be able to? get along to St Augustine's. They can phone call our office. The phone number is 01389 Um We're trying to discourage any members of the public, obviously, unless as donations to come to the office um, to pick up food. Because mm. we do have the delivery drivers out there, we can deliver to everybody. Um, our Facebook page, we can take messages through that. Facebook page is Food for Thought Western Bartonshire and email as well. Email is foodforthoughtt14 at gmail.com. So uh, email, phone call and Facebook is the way we're kind of reaching out to folk and telling folk how to contact us. I mean, fantastic. On that note, uh, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to Clyde Sider, Lorraine. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, Thank uh, you. I know, just by listening to you, I know you are really busy, but I, I know it anyway. Thanks again on behalf of everybody at Clyde Sider and our readers. You're welcome. Well, Tricia, uh, as, as I say, on behalf of everybody at Clydesider, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming on, and uh, I know your time is pretty precious. And uh, and also, thank you for doing the great work that you're doing. Up there. I've seen it myself, and it's fantastic. So, uh, and thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh,